All right, what is up? What is good? After a two-week hiatus, we are back with more Juan Peace. Uh, I couldn't be more excited. We left on quite the cliffhanger, as is common before Oda takes a break, with Luffy encountering the title character here for this chapter, Loki, down in the underworld area of Elbaf. Uh, what will happen? Well, the smart money is on Luffy releasing him for no goddamn reason at all. I mean... We've seen it all before. <laughs> uh, there's been numerous occasions where someone who is definitely trouble is in a situation where they are not causing trouble. They are prevented from causing trouble. And Luffy uh, undoes that prevention <laughs> and creates some more trouble. Now, there's kind of two ways to think about it from a storytelling perspective. Uh, we know, I think, the most obvious prediction is that Loki will eventually be freed in this arc, and that this arc will largely revolve around whatever destructive capability Loki has and uh, the efforts of everyone else to resist it. There may be some twists. Maybe in some ways Loki is actually a good guy. We don't know. We don't really understand exactly what it is he was trying to do, what this legendary devil fruit does why he thinks that he is Niki, the sun god. Many, many things to come, but certainly we'd all agree that this arc would be very disappointing if we just sailed away with Loki still chained up. Now, it would be kind of weird, too, if we have this encounter, Luffy leaves him chained up, and then later, through some unrelated mechanism or something strange like Luffy coming back, Loki is unchained. That is just sort of like a storytelling redundancy that takes some of the impact out, I think. And, and Oda is very good about not doing things like that. At the same time, though, I would be kind of disappointed if Loki gets out now and suddenly we are in the throes of Ragnarok pandemonium battles, catastrophes, cataclysms right away. Because I just want to have some fun Elbaf adventures. I want to see what the giant village is like. I want to see what kind of culture they have. I want to meet a bunch more goofy giants when they're happy and goofy and not when they're amidst a, a battle for the fate of their entire island. I want to see who the damn silhouette on the beach is. <laughs> I want to see Robin and Saul reunite tearfully. So I think, uh, I don't think Oda will deny us that either, especially because we have the Robin and Saul cathartic, tearful reunion. We know that's going to happen. That would be a huge disappointment if it didn't. And I think it would be very odd to... I mean, you, you could have it at the end of the arc, you know? They just didn't have a chance until all of this calamity was taken care of. Um, but I think instead, yeah, we're going to have some fun ease into the arc, more adventurous stuff, just like we've been having so far with... Uh, the toy land, living in the Lego fortress. Um, and then we'll have our big cataclysmic battle. And then we'll have, you know, <laughs> whatever the hell is left after that. Um, so my thinking is that Luffy will not actually immediately break this guy out of his chains. Instead, they'll have kind of a conversation. And this is because another typical Oda trait is that Luffy learns a whole bunch of stuff. The reader learns a whole bunch of stuff. But then Luffy doesn't actually learn a whole bunch of stuff because it makes more sense to the reader than it does to the protagonist of the story because he's a dumbass. Uh, so I think we're going to get quite a bit of exposition here. Luffy's not going to know what to make of it. And then I think this plot point will just kind of get put on hold as we then transition into what the other half of the crew are doing, uh, what the ones, uh, the, the people making their journey over the bridge, the Straw Hats doing that are doing. You know, start bouncing around a little bit and leave uh, the fate of Luffy and Loki left undisturbed. Okay, so that's the chapter. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Let's read it as if we need to. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, here we see Speed, uh, one of the first uh, gifters that was transformed by the Mochi uh, to uh, be on the side of the, the samurai. Uh, I can't remember the character that pulls Mochi out of her cheeks, but I can't remember the name of her, at least. But there she is with Speed and Yamato riding on that thing that I also can't remember the name of. Uh, classic Wayno stuff. Okay, 
Yeah! <laughs> Luffy is just so happy that it's Alpaf. <laughs> Been waiting to get here for ages. Everything really is huge in Alpaf. <laughs> I think most of them understand that they're on Alpaf. I think Luffy was one of the few that <laughs> was a little still confused. The most powerful nation in the world. Oh, I wanted to say this too. We're really delaying reading the chapter here, but I think the whole existence of Elbaf really proves the genius of Oda's world building, right? Because all Battle Shonen has power scaling. That's just kind of a, a granted in the, the genre. And I, I think people wouldn't like it if it didn't have that. Who wants to see the battles get weaker over time? The, the stakes have to keep getting raised. The, the climaxes of the fights have to get more powerful. The, you know, new techniques have to be unlocked. The characters need to get stronger. Um, but I think you can go about ba uh, power scaling in a lot of different ways. And some of them are a lot more elegant than others. And basically what I mean by elegance is, like, does it make sense that these forces weren't a threat up until now? Uh, and, you know, something like Dragon Ball Z, for as much as I love it, and as much as it's, you know, such a landmark uh, battle shonen, it wasn't particularly elegant about this stuff, right? Uh, you would just have aliens show up. And it's like, okay, yeah, they just didn't show up until now. So it makes sense that they could be way stronger than everything on Earth. And they just hadn't arrived yet. So, it, sure, sure. Um, but then they would also have, like, a, oh, suddenly there's these androids. <laughs> a character from way, way long ago managed to build these robots that are way stronger than anything else on Earth. And a whole bunch of the aliens coming in. Uh, and then after that, oh, they did this, like, magic ritual to bring this, like, magical creature back to life. And guess what? It's stronger than the androids. It's stronger than the aliens. <laughs> it's stronger than everything. It just, like, keeps popping up. And it's basically just, oh, isn't it convenient <laughs> that they didn't revive Boo and then Boo turned out to be roughly as strong as, like, Vegeta back in the Saiyan sa saga. And it's like, wow, that's really strong. Sans this ancient warrior race that travels around the galaxy defeating planets. Um, but, yeah, our, our magical ritual has only produced this being that is as strong as that. Uh, okay, it's done. <laughs> what attack? It's over. Um, anyways, with, with One Piece, I think it's, like, very, very elegant the way they've built up the giant pirates as a fantastic example. Because we've seen what's been described as, like, the tippy-top of the power structure in, like, the world government. You know, we've seen the Gorosai fight. We've seen the Admirals fight. Uh, we've even seen Emu fight. Um, we've seen the tippy-top of the power of pirates. You know, the, the four emperors, the Yonko. Whitebeard is the strongest pirate. Kaido is, is the strongest living creature, is how he was described. I mean, it's kind of hard to power scale past these points, but we know that all of these things are understood by reputation, right? Like, that's the name they've made for themselves in the domains of piracy, in the domains of counter-piracy. And yet, we also have been told all along, well, Elbaf has nothing to do with the world government. Elbaf is the strongest nation in the world. We've seen random-ass giants from Elbaf do devastating, powerful things, and they are nowhere near the top of the Elbaf power hierarchy. We've seen Dory and Bragi, the, the captains of the old pirate crew. We've never really seen them, like, fight <laughs> to much extent. They kind of got tricked by Mr. Three. We saw them fight each other to a standstill. And we saw them mess up the gigantic goldfish, which uh, is quite the feat. Um, and, and basically, yeah, it, like, it would still make sense. It would not be surprising if these giants contained unfathomable power on the tier of the Yonko, on the tier of the Marine Admirals. And it wouldn't be like, well, why weren't they doing X, Y, Z? Why why haven't we seen the effects of this power yet? They're just chilling. They don't have to. It's it's so just the, the physical separation of the islands and the fact that it's established that certain characters just aren't getting involved in certain conflicts. I don't know. It's like really, really great. Like, <laughs> uh, it makes these arcs so, so exciting. Like, they've built them up so much just in terms of, like, wanting to see Elbaf, wanting to see what it's like there, wanting to see the, the designs and everything. 
But then also they've left it as this big question mark in the power scaling discussion uh, that, that there's going to be amazing things we see in terms of power, in terms of battles, in terms of the characters we know and love struggling uh, to, to match the power of the giants. Like that is still on the table. They, they hadn't ever even come close to uh, succeeding, succeeding that explicitly. I don't know. I don't, I'm rambling, but I, I'm just very excited about this arc. And unless you, in case you can tell, <laughs> I was on Dorian Bragi's ship. I'd never seen so many giants at once. It was really overwhelming. <laughs> I can believe they're the most powerful. <laughs> Loki, Loki is like not having this shit at all. I am the sun god enshrined in the legends of this land. You will not speak without my permission, human. Special government bounty 2.6 billion. That's very interesting. So that's some explicit power scaling there. They mention it as a special bounty because it explains why it hasn't been mentioned in conversations about big bounties. Um, there's there's actually quite a lot of like questions contained in that. Like, why does the government know about Loki? It's kind of this internal conflict happening in the land of giants that the government really has no idea about. But maybe, you know, they've got informants, they've got people, they, they understand that if Loki escaped from Elbaf, that the Giants weren't able to take care of it, they would need to make it an all-hands-on-deck situation. Uh, what do you make of this situation? <laughs> now, this is a question I just don't know, and I think there is an answer to this, but I don't know it. Everybody is saying Luffy is the reincarnation of the sun god Niki. Has anyone actually told him that? <laughs> I don't think he's, like, understood that. When the giant robot was, like, talking to him and mentioned something like this, he had no idea what the robot was talking about. So that's a situation where the readers and certain characters are way ahead of Luffy. Uh, what do I make of it? That you're chained up! <laughs> Keenly survised! <laughs> but no man chooses to be chained, and I am no exception in... In this regard, I would rather be free. Do you know I've been here for six years? Six years. I consider myself the strongest in all of Elbaf. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. That's a... Okay, okay. I, I'm not surprised. I mean, it's a big-ass tree. They said that Adam was the biggest tree. <laughs> oh, that's so much fun. Because it's like... Already it's like, uh, it's so typical of Oda that when they were designing the Sunny, you know, there needed to be an explanation for why the Sunny was going to be like frickin' invincible, whereas the Mary, it would make no sense if it was frickin' invincible. So what is, what is the reason that the Sunny is so strong? Well, Frankie got his hands on this most legendary of all wood. He'd been saving it for a special occasion like this. That makes sense. And, of course, we got to describe what this legendary wood is. It's from the Jewel Tree Adam. Already the name is super evocative. You know, Adam in the Garden of Eden, the, the tree of the knowledge of fruit and... The tree with the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Um, very, very evocative. And then the second spark that I think makes One Piece so unique is that you realize, oh, hey, you know, that's not just a throwaway line. There is a chance that someday on the Grand Line we will encounter the Jewel Tree Adam. Uh, I think there is probably some percentage of readers that started to expect that to happen. And, you know, it's not like I think they would have been super disappointed. They get to the ending and they're pouting and they're going, we never even saw the Jewel Tree Adam. <laughs> um, but then, on the third level, and this is where One Piece exceeds even my expectations, is that they integrate these things into stuff that you were already excited about. It would be one thing, I think, to kind of just be like, all right, now we're going to set off on a voyage for the Jewel Tree Adam. We, we've got kind of a side quest. Uh, we have to repair the ship. We need to find more wood to repair the ship. So now we have to go out of our way to find the Jewel Tree Adam. And it's kind of like, oh, okay, like you're cashing that in. That's very clever. I'm not disappointed at all. In fact, I'd probably be pretty impressed and go, oh my god, I remember when that was mentioned. But it's so much more elegant. To just kind of weave it into other instances of lore where it can overlap. Amazing, amazing. Okay, yeah, so he can't bust through the tree. It's so freaking strong. That's been established. And we got the sea prism chain. We already know about that too. Got a question for you, Roddy. It's Luffy. You want to make a deal? Let's make a deal. 
Should you undo these chains that bind me, I'll offer to completely eliminate one rival pirate crew of your choosing. What say you? <laughs> the key would should be somewhere in the village. Okay, interesting. I think this this is kind of how we bridge the gaps. Because I was like, uh, Luffy's just going to free him right away. <laughs> There's no reason that they would not have that happen. But he has to go get the key. Assuming he agrees to it, he's not going to agree to this deal, but maybe some other deal. He has to go get the key from the village, and that's how we get the village antics before we get Apocalypse. Place your hand. But did I mention, this is the lower plane of Elbeth, the underworld, a place that no one dares venture into. Those judged to be criminals are dropped down here. This place is their prison and execution yard. Okay, so now we're going to get to see Luffy show off to Loki how freaking strong he is. Dig into the snow around you and you'll find the bones of giant and man alike. These mountains have existed for tens of thousands of years. In our mythology, we call this the first world. This is so sick, dude. And then a traditional One Piece panel of a whole bunch of giant beasts coming and imposing onto Luffy. Ah, this takes me back. Yes, of course, his whole two-year training arc was just constant panel like this after panel like this. Even the ones we couldn't see, we know. Ominous giant beasts were looming over Luffy and all of them. The sun is only a dead memory. I don't know about you, these snowy peaks, but you best be wary of the wild beasts. A great and deadly sentinel patrols each and every mountain since I was a lad. They've all been fast friends of mine. So if you don't do as I say, they will not take kindly to it. Yeah. I mean, I, I just was going on and on and on about how the giants could be really freaking strong. But, uh... These random ass beasts Oh, a sentinel for each mountain? Ah, nah. Nothing to it. Conquer hockey. Boom. Or maybe for fun. Punch, punch. Boom. <laughs> the other little ones are humans who choose to do battle with Elbaf. They wear stinking robes to turn away the ravenous beast, but they only delay the inevitable. They are corpses already. <laughs> that's really uncalled for, sir. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Ooh, yeah, around here you don't expect to run into Shanks. Yeah, okay, I do it. Shanks was the mysterious silhouette on the beach. So he, too, is roaming around Elbaf, maybe just exploring, knowing that Luffy was going to show up, killing time, waiting for Luffy. Now, that's another legendary conversation, you know. They they haven't seen each other since, they were, since Luffy was a kid. It's not going to be like Ging and Gong. Hey, there's my dad. <laughs> it's, there's going to be some gravitas here. <laughs> Not that I dislike that in Hunter x Hunter. I thought that was an amazing moment in Hunter x Hunter. But, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I should have realized this. It's not a fight. These are just nice little animals. What was I thinking? Of course Luffy's just going to tame them. Hmm... Ah, uh, so this is how Loki pivots. Now he's going to try to provoke Luffy. That coward of a pirate, he certainly did. <laughs> and Luffy instantly takes the bait. <laughs> takes the bait in like 0.1 seconds. <laughs> Busting out gear 4. Doing a lot of gear 4 lately. You know. Just so we don't forget about it. It only really got one arc where it really, truly shined, so it's nice. Uh, I guess two arcs. Yeah, it, in, in Whole Cake, he used it quite a lot, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Helpless here. Get the bed. <laughs> I'm gonna kill him. I'll bed you into the tree. <laughs> All the, 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 the giant animals are so freaked out by this. <laughs> They have no idea what to think. <laughs> why was Shanks here? Why did he come and see you? Couldn't have been why he was here. Is he still in Elbaf? These Ed answers for nothing. Okay. So this is how their dirty deal unfolds. Luffy will now be trying to get the key, I'm sure. This is very stupid because it feels like he should instead just be looking for Shanks or asking like other people or just doing anything besides freeing this clearly villainous person, but he doesn't care. <laughs> I think he wants to free him anyways, just because, 
I don't know. He's a little pissed off at him and he wants to try to fight. <laughs> Someone's coming. I don't know who it is. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a uh, road. Freaking out, trying to chase down his escapees. They're chasing him and carrying the Sunny. Ah, yeah, of course, because the Sunny got brought into Rhodes' little playhouse. Sounds like it's cutting time. <laughs> All right. Get to the All that village it must be up there. If they catch up to us, we're goners. Okay. Okay, meanwhile, we're back down in the underworld. Uh, Hadrudin. Ah, so maybe they're rushing away because Hadrudin is back. The captain of the new giant pirates. Subordinate of Luffy. Uh, how do we carry this monster? Oh, there's another new giant pirates guy. Might have been shown off in the cover story. I can't remember. He's a painter, though. Sunstones don't work when it's snowing. Okay, so they're just going to haul it back. A Hadrudin refresher. Yes, yes. It's really forgotten by the world until he was rescued by the Straw Hat Kara crew. Now he's one of the seven ca captains in the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. Very good. The mighty warriors of Elbaf. Yee hee hee. Ah, oh, they're so cool. I love these. Okay, yeah. So there's just the five of them. By the way, someone in the comments pointed out that Gerd actually shows up in the Big Mom flashback. Isn't that so cool? God, I love One Piece. <laughs> Those little things like that are just so much fun. It just makes the world so lively. It just makes you feel so excited for, like, remembering these things, for stitching all these details together. Okay, meanwhile, we're still on the way to Elbaf on the giant pirate ship. This is the, the rest of the crew remaining. Uh, he did a skull joke. He hasn't had a chance to do a skull joke in a while. His little bone sound effect is back. Very cute, very cute. Cutting Robin's hair back to how it was when she was a kid. The demon child, Nico Robin. So that she can be recognized, I guess, by Saul. Saul, Saul for the reunion with Saul. <laughs> yeah, so look, when you met Saul. Nice, yeah. You'll have me ballin'. Ah, but now it's not going to happen. Now that they set it up like this, it's not going to happen for a while. I still think we're going to have, like, more fun adventures and stuff before we get into full apocalyptic battles. And we might have the Saul reunion before the apocalyptic battle. But it's not going to go so easy. Ah, it's Dr. Saul, he's fallen and he can't get up. God, ah, come on, come on now. Can't Robin be happy? Give, him a, just give, give Robin a little iota of happiness, please. Let her see her big giant pal. All right. Well, a lot is happening. Uh, I think my predictions are still going to remain true <laughs> in terms of the overall structure of this arc. Um, Shanks, I think, basically, I think we'll have more heartfelt stuff with Saul. Saul is maybe dying. The remnants of Ohara. We learn about what happened with Loki. Why is he chained up? What's going on there? We have the reunion with the new giant pirates. Uh, that all fun stuff. This whole time, Luffy is like, where's Shanks? Where's Shanks? He decides, all right, well, I'm going to free Loki. Some I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> then frees Loki. Some sort of Ragnarok apocalypse battle starts to unfold. She gets crazy. There's maybe 12 volumes. <laughs> We're fighting, giants are fighting, Luffy's fighting, Luffy fights Loki, it's awesome. Find out what his legendary devil fruit is. All of that's going to be sublime. And then after that, Shanks shows up. And uh, he's like, eh, I just figured you'd handle it. I didn't, I didn't want to bother. <laughs> he's just been chilling somewhere, watching, drinking. And then we get, as the kind of emotional climax of the arc, the Luffy-Shanks reunion. Which will probably set off... Who knows what the hell comes after this arc. But why am I even talking about that? We still have all of Elbaf to get through. It's been a fantastic arc so far. Let's uh, look forward to next week. Hee <laughs> hee.